we have the capacity of reasoning. Utilizing that capacity, we investigate and have a look. Am I this body? Am I this separate entity? Am I this individual? And under the investigation, it falls apart. So it, it can't stand the false. Anything that's false is not true. And we believed in without question. If you believe in it, if it's not true, it'll fall apart under the investigation. The false cannot stand up to the investigation. So how do I investigate that? Well, ask yourself, who or what is this I or me? Am I the body? Am I the mind? Am I the person? Am I the persona, this conceptual image? When we see pointing out that the persona is a mask, a conceptual image. Am I a conceptual image? If I'm a conceptual image, what would happen when I went to sleep? When I get up and give up all that imagining, it would be the end of me, but it's not, because I wake up in the morning. So who wakes up in the morning? Well, it dawns on you that the seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, smelling, and it will appear in that moment of sleep. It dawns on you, the sleeping is over for you. Know? Mm. The reasoning starts again. And the conceptualizing starts along with it. And so there's nobody that wakes up. It's just awareness or the existence, which is seemingly obscured, the consciousness becomes utterly aware that it exists. You don't recognize your existence while you're in deep sleep. Mm. You can't say I exist without a concept. So the individual or the ego who is on the quest to wake up, that one doesn't wake up? No, but it dawns on the so-called individual. Well, I'm not this entity that I believe myself to be. There is an awakening or a dawning to it, a recognizing. Well, I'm not this body, I'm not this mind, I'm not this concept. I'm not this individual. I am utterly aware, or totally aware of my being or existing. I am that existence itself. I am that awareness itself. Their labels are put on, well, not even those labels. So is the existence waking up or awareness waking up? It's a recognition that the believed in entity that we've taken to be real was never real at all. Joining that I've been looking in the wrong direction. I've been taking all these concepts on board and believing on them, but being reinforced by the parents, school, society, and everybody else. The energy of belief has gone into them, making them real, and the belief is seen true. Can you believe in something when it's seen true? You see, it's false. You can't say there's a natural dawning. I can't be that belief. And your dictionary definition tells you that a belief is not the actual. Definition of belief is an unquestioned acceptance of something in the absence of reason. It can't be reasoned out. Acceptance of an alleged fact without positive knowledge or proof. And haven't we been trying to reason it out all our life and never found the answer in the mind, in the conceptual mind? It might dawn on us then, the awakening might come about when we're... Maybe I've been looking in the wrong direction. I've been looking in a so-called thing called mind all my life and never found the answer. Maybe this answer is not there. Because when you look at that, what direction is there outside the mind? There's absolutely no direction whatsoever outside the mind. So it's all in the mind. And while I'm in the mind, the nature of the mind is to vibrate and to go on dualistic vibration like it has all along. So there's no way out. Except if I start to, it starts to dawn on my it's the wrong direction, what am I going to do? I'm going to see what way is there is outside of the mind. And I might pause the thought or try and see what's there prior to the thought. And the resonation or the seeing might come about where I realise the life and that life that was there prior to me thought. I to be thinking. But the contemplation, it still takes place in the mind through analyzing concepts. Yes. 
to the thought, they couldn't utilize the thought now as we utilize and recognize. Instead of it utilizing, utilizing you and telling you, as this entity you don't understand, or you've got to become realized, or liberated, or I'm not good enough, or I'm fearful. And that one essence, like the sun is shining naturally, and ever by itself, it's self shining. The daylight is self daylight, the night time is self darkness. It's all that one self, the self I believe in myself to be, is the one self, the one vibrating essence, patterning, shaping, forming, and experiencing it as everything. There's no separation or no development whatsoever. Okay, but can I have a glimpse of that right now? Yes. How do I do that? Well, you're seeing right now, aren't you? Yes. And before the thought comes up, I see. Aren't you seeing before that thought comes up? Yes. And how is it translated in the mind? Seeing is happening, it's translated as I see, aren't you? Mm. When you say, oh, I see, what are you doing? You added all these concepts on it, the conceptual image you've got about yourself. That's me, cat, that thinks it's now seeing, the conceptual image. It's, and what cat sees is seeing this video or whatever, the questions and everything going on. Cat has become the subject. The thought you've got, the conceptual image about yourself, cat, becomes the subject. And what you're seeing has become the object because you put labels and shapes and forms on it. But can the thought I see actually see? Can a thought see? Nope. Can a thought hear? Nope. Can a thought be aware? Nope. So this conceptual image, when you investigate, you realize it can't see, can't hear, can't be aware. It's never done anything. You've got to choose. It can't. Because the seeing is happening, the hearing is happening, the tasting, touching is happening, all the function is happening. If it's not translated with a thought and divided into subject object, it's just a pure, spontaneous happening, occurring naturally and effortlessly. Just like the earth is rolling around the sun, as the earth is saying, I'm rolling around the sun. And the sun is saying, now it's dark, now it's daylight. The sun doesn't know anything about that, and neither does the earth. When the earth, when where we are now, in this part of the earth, faces away, faces toward the sun, it's daylight. And we're seeing by the daylight. When it rolls around the other side, it's dark, and they've got the darkness. But the darkness doesn't know anything about the light, the light doesn't know anything about the darkness. So the two aspects are the one thing, which vibrates to the opposite. Mm. And the same with the sun. And the sun doesn't stop shining, it's always never shining, but it seemingly gets obscured by clouds. It doesn't. It's always and ever fresh. Just like that essence as you are, never gets obscured by any of the thoughts, feelings, emotions that appear in it. They come and they go. While ever the naming goes on the labeling, which is thought, you're going to lose sight of it. Now then the reasoning capacity becomes very useful. But because we're related to the other, it divides in the opposite always, the opposite can come up. And it can be seen as good and bad. But I use the terminology like there's no one-ended stick. Each stick's got two ends to it. So the good end might be the round, smooth end you can hang on to, and the bad end might be the natural thin end you can break or snap or do it. But you see, there's still the one stick. So when the bad appears, and typically, we don't like the bad, we try to get rid of it. Not realising of itself it's going to change, and the good end doesn't stay around, no matter how much you want to keep it there. It's going to change in the opposite, just like in nature. It's constantly vibrating in the opposite. It's not going to be summer all the time. It's not going to be winter all the time. It's not going to be a spring and autumn all the time. It's constantly transit, constantly changing. It's not going to be daylight all the time, or darkness. So what you're saying, are you saying that you still have a negative emotions or thoughts at times? Yes. The thought is a vibration and it can only vibrate dualistically. And look at how your mind functions. Isn't it good and bad? The so-called good is the positive, the bad is the negative. Isn't it happy or sad? The happiness is supposed to be the good, the sadness is the bad, the negative. Is it pleasant and painful? The pleasantness is the good, the painful is the negative. See your mind and see what's always functioning dualistically, positive and negative, good and bad, happy, sad, loving, hating can't function any other way. 
where's the centre? Where's the middle to it? It's either negative or positive. Well, I could use the analogy of going to the South Pole. How much further south can you go? Can't go the next step would be north, wouldn't it? Mm. If you're still on the earth. Go to the North Pole, how much further north can you go? The next step would be south. Now, where do they meet? And you're told in nature and you realise they must come back to where they're equal. In, and don't they call that the equator? So when it becomes that equilibrium in ourselves, we're not functioning in the opposite, in that equilibrium, well, what good and bad can there be? And they seemingly come up, but they're not believed in anymore, or taken for granted anymore, and they will naturally move on by themselves. And they will naturally move on by themselves.